Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another Sunday night live stream show. That's right, it's Sunday night, y'all, and it is time for that live stream show. Tonight we're going to be talking a lot about our Red Snapper and Gag Grouper season. We are on the eve of the summertime hey guys, Red Hubbard Snapper chaos that is June and July. So we're going to talk a lot about those. Really, really over uh, embellished <laughs> species, and uh, then we're going to talk a lot about what's going on now, what we're seeing, and uh, show you guys some photos, and of course, give away free fishing trips. It is Sunday night, May thirtieth at eight twenty-five p.m. Keep in mind, guys, if you are watching live, just bear with us about five minutes or so, and we will get started around eight thirty p.m. If you're not watching live. Don't forget, guys, you can go ahead and uh, skip forward to where you see that video start, to where you see our smiling faces. That's where you want to start if you're not watching live. So if you're watching live, bear with us. We just need a few minutes to get the show started up. As always, don't forget to comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream in order to be eligible for a chance to win those free fishing trips. If you're watching on Instagram, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on a Facebook group or Facebook page, that's fine, but you have to navigate over to Hubbard's Marina on Facebook. Check out our Hubbard's Marina Facebook page. Make sure you like the page and then comment one time on that live video. That's how you are entered into that random name generator for a chance to win one of those free fishing trips that we give away during the show. So don't forget to do that. And then also, if you're picked as one of those lucky winners, you do have to comment. Uh, or you don't have to comment. You have to text us at that phone number in the bottom right-hand corner your full home address within about five minutes to claim those free trips. So don't forget to claim your free trips if you're one of the lucky winners because you want to make sure that you get your winnings. And in order to do this, so you do have to, again, comment lot or uh, text us within about five minutes to make sure uh, that you verify the fact that you were watching live and uh, you deserve some of those free fishing trips that you won also guys don't forget to text in your questions that phone number in the bottom right hand corner there you can text in your questions to 727-393-1947 and uh, we'll answer your questions live during the show. And later on during the show, we will also have uh, the opportunity for you to call in. So if you want to call in and ask your questions live over the phone, you can do so as well. So there's a lot of different options for you to ask your questions and get them answered live during the show. Also, if you're watching on Instagram, we are now live on Instagram, so keep in mind uh, as well that uh, you guys are able to uh, uh, watch on Instagram, but then you have to uh, go to uh, your Safari or your Google Chrome on your phone, and then in order to do uh, the show in landscape to where you can see the full screen, if you're on the internet, you can go to Instagram.com and log in there and you'll be able to turn your phone sideways and see the full video if you're on the instagram app they lock that aspect ratio so you can only see the partial screen on the instagram app but if you go over to uh, your browser on your phone or your computer and log into instagram that way then you're able to uh, easily see uh, the video kind of widescreen format like it's meant to be so Makes it a little easier to view, uh, even though you are still watching live on the Instagram app, you're going to get parts of either side of the screen cut off. So still working through that. Unfortunately, Instagram is uh, not very friendly to our Facebook and YouTube streams, but at least you can listen. So it's kind of like a podcast, if you will, if you're watching on the Instagram app with partial part of the screen showing. We are almost ready to get started, guys. We just need another minute here. We want to make sure we have the random name generator set up to be able to give you guys those free fishing trips. So we're just a minute or two away uh, from getting started. 
Don't forget, guys, as well, we do have that opportunity to win free trips, but you have to comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook uh, Facebook live stream. What's up, Scraps? No, I just had a question. Like, am I, am I literally watching all those comments pop up at yeah. the same? No kidding. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah, there's a lot of people watching. That's insane. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Well, hi to all of you. I am Scraps. I'm one. I'm first mate on the uh, one of the first mates on the uh, the hub charter. Uh, we do a lot of uh, private charter fishing. Um, we got Captain Pete here as well. Say hi, Captain Pat. Captain Pete. Sorry. <laughs> hey, everybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Facebook world. <laughs> so Captain Pete is uh, one of our first captains on the hub, and Scraps is one of our first mates on the hub and also works some of the other boats too. And uh, they're in the studio tonight to talk a little bit about the shark fishing that they've been doing and uh, a little bit about what they've been seeing on the water. And uh, we're all here to answer your questions live. So don't forget to uh, send over those questions if you do have them to that phone number in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And we are getting dangerously close to getting started here, guys. I appreciate you bearing with yeah, us. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go, man. I want to hear these questions. Yeah, you want to answer the questions. Not only hear them, but you got to answer them. Yeah. Oh, you ready for oh that? I forgot about that part. <laughs> <laughs> is there going to be a quiz afterwards? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully this is multiple choice. <laughs> There's no one to cheat off of. You're yeah. segregated on your own side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. We're going to fight later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, again, don't forget to uh, send in your questions, that phone number in the bottom right-hand corner. And uh, hopefully everybody's ready for a great show. Uh, we are just about ready to get rolling. Make sure you comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. If you're watching on Instagram, don't forget to give our profile a follow. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. On Facebook, make sure to like the page. And on Facebook, don't forget to share the video stream uh, to your favorite fishing club or your timeline. Uh, help us to uh, spread the word and make sure everybody is watching the live stream show tonight. Nice. Josh, do we got the random comment oh, generator hooked drum. up, ready to go? Holy cow. We're almost ready, guys. So, that thing is right. massive. Oh, yeah. We're going to show it. all those in, inshore photos. Uh, nice. we got a lot of good photos tonight to show you guys. Plus, next week, we're going to have even more. Look at the more, fish, too. Yeah, even more <laughs> great photos when, once red snapper season opens up and we start giving some of those big, big uh, monster red snapper and gag grouper. We'll get even more for sure. So having a little bit of technical difficulties with our live show random name generator but we will get this up and running very shortly give us one second guys we're going to be right back to Sorry can... about that, guys. So we are going to go ahead and get this thing started up. So happy Sunday night, y'all. Thanks for tuning in and joining us. Again, we've got Captain Pete here and Scraps, and uh, we are talking all about nearshore and offshore fishing tips, tricks, and more. So 
Hopefully you guys are ready for a great show. As I mentioned, we have Red Snapper season starting up June 1st, so that is Tuesday. Tuesday, our Red Snapper season kicks off, and we're very excited about that. Lots of good stuff coming up. We've got plenty of 39-hour trips, 12-hour extreme trips, and uh, we've got two 44-hour trips and long-range private charters. Unfortunately, trips are filling up if they're not already full a lot of the shows that we've been doing this past year and even at the end of last year we were telling you guys to book early and book often for red snapper season and my oh my was that a uh, that held true this year our 39 hours are virtually completely booked up through around mid-july then there's a few trips with some openings our 12-hour extreme trips are essentially about the same way and uh, our private charters on the flying hub too for long-range opportunities for Red Snapper are completely booked for Red Snapper season. And even the hub for Nearshore and uh, the occasional Red Snapper trip is booked up through the uh, entire Red Snapper period. So going to be a busy summer, and uh, tomorrow is our last day to kind of prepare. You guys you guys prepared? You ready for the summertime uh, grind? Dude, can't wait, man. I'm Dylan, Dylan, it's I'm ready for the long-range trip. It's definitely uh, uh, that time of year where we're all – getting our rods and reels ready uh just yesterday or the day before we were at bass pro we picked up another 70 reels uh to get ready for the summer uh getting those dialed in spooled up and on some fishing rods uh some fresh tackle and uh we are just kicking it off right with this busy holiday weekend it is absolutely insane down on the beaches a lot of people in the area uh, and so often people wait all year to come fishing during red snapper season in June and July and it always cracks me up because this time of year is when we are at our most busy uh, so it's definitely uh, kind of less room on the boat uh, less opportunities for kind of uh, discussions between the captain and crew uh, because we're all so busy uh, and then other times of the year like January February uh, and uh, September October early part of November uh, we're half full if if not uh, less than that and uh, we're just catching plenty of fish there's tons of fish out there to catch besides the red snapper you guys have talked heard me talk about it before not to mention the parking yeah you gotta park you gotta park before you get there yeah ladies and gentlemen like <laughs> you really really have to give yourself an hour there just At to least. park it's, you know uh, it's so you really tricky. have to respect that you're on an island <laughs> <laughs> with one main road and that's definitely true for the 39 hour trips over the summer for red snapper season you definitely want to make sure that you show up early those 39 hour trips depart at 3 p.m i would suggest showing up around uh, even as early as 11 a.m so that way you can park without headache get settled in get checked in before everybody starts showing up settle your gear in you can hang out on the dock you can go upstairs to hooters you can mm -hmm. walk around john's pass and get a meal yeah yeah and then <laughs> come on back and be ready for the seminar and take care of your parking once the parking garage opens up around 12 12 30 it's a much easier way to do it i think uh friday this past friday we had one of the 12 hour night snapper guests show up for his 7 p.m night snapper trip at like 11 a.m <laughs> to avoid the afternoon parking fiasco That's that great, is john's though. pass yeah. and he was able to it's hang around we won't yeah. name names and we were able to he was <laughs> able to hang <laughs> around and enjoy man. the day fishing, yeah, yeah. and great. it just you avoid a lot of headache that way yep. it's not saying that anybody has to arrive that early but it definitely makes your life a, a lot, lot easier. easier yeah yeah <laughs> just yeah. just just yeah, save yourself the heartache and the headache, <laughs> yeah. and just get and there frustration. early. And that's why it's always a good idea to show up early, especially during the busy June and July months, and even March and April during spring break. And uh, if you're local, if you can swing it, come visit when there's plenty of fish open in January, February, September. Uh, August, September, and uh, October, November before uh, we get crazy busy. Basically, March, April, June, and July are the four busiest months of the year. Yeah. And around the holidays, too. Uh, from and not to mention, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do in the pass. Mm -hmm. You guys can... You can Eat food, drink some drinks, watch the dolphins in the past. Oh, that's a good one. You can even take our dolphin trip. While we're waiting for uh, the yes. uh, lot or the random name generator to get worked out here, we can talk a little bit about John's past and the fact that 
let's argue about the best uh, the best restaurants in John's Pass. I mean, Ooh. Scraps. I met Scraps when I think I was like seventeen, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and very very uh, delinquent in John's Pass with other crew members, uh, particularly Smokey, the the bad influence. Hold on, here's the thing. Uh, am I not allowed to say a name? You shouldn't say names. But we can no, always throw Smokey under the bus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's that's no, I mean always with, fun. With the restaurants. Oh, the restaurants that we were underage drinking at? That's not a good idea. No, no. <laughs> I'm talking about the food, man. <laughs> <laughs> the food? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think one of my favorites in John's Pass that not a lot of people realize is there is Mad Beach Craft Brewing Company. Some pulled okay. pork nachos. They got some good They're food, good. man. Very they good. got some good food. They really do. That yeah. they'll... The, the loaded tater tots they have or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. Dolosis pizza. Dolosis is hands yeah. down I'm my... Too loud on the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're at a 10. Del- Perhaps Del- we need yeah. to get a, at a low 7. seven That's seven. how good Dolosis is. Dolosis. <laughs> Dolosis yeah. all, all day. All day. Love Dolosis. And then the other uh, kind of... I watched local. the hockey there. Go Bolts. Yeah. What's that, what's I, oh, what's the score? That, the Somebody on there text the me the score of the game. Or something yeah, the hangover, uh, or the hangover wrap. wrap. That's from Boardwalk Grill. Oh, Boardwalk, Boardwalk Grill. Grill. There you That's go. Yep. In the morning down yeah. there. Yeah. And Pirates Pub and Grub is another yes. local favorite. Oh, yes. Pirates Pub and Grub. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You guys yes. are very enthusiastic and passionate about your food. I like it. Mm-hmm. And then also... And about where we live. Yeah, this place. Yeah, we love John's Pass and we love... Waltz well, Fish Shack. It's all local. Have you tried Waltz Fish Shack? Waltz is the yeah. Yeah, Waltz, Waltz is awesome. Waltz is good. They're only open when they have fresh, fresh fish, fish, which mm-hmm. is not very yep. often. Yep. We still struggling, Josh. And how uh, can I? He didn't like to answer. Comments. That's how you know he's busy. Yeah. He's trying to fix <laughs> trying to fix our problems, but we're working it out. Uh, and then uh, we do want to show you guys real quickly some of the photos of what we've been catching out there. And then we're going to get rolling into your questions while Josh continues to chip away at our random name generator problems. Because we want to give you guys some free fishing trips tonight. So again, don't forget to comment live on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream in order to be eligible to win those free fishing trips. And now we're going to show you guys what we've been seeing inshore and uh let's see what we've been seeing oh all my buttons changed around again i like it i can see myself yeah see that that's neat there we go let's see if it worked it did work oh look at that big old all right drum. so the black drum are still around the docks piers bridges as far as the inshore catch goes we're seeing a lot of those black drum on live shrimp and uh, we're seeing some on the cut crabs as well. The redfish bite around the mangrove shorelines has been very steady. We've been seeing a lot of redfish around the flats, the oyster bars. What? I got a point to say we got a lot of that seaweed coming in mm-hmm. that's right there on the shore. We saw it today on the beach. Yeah. And I wouldn't recommend fishing on the beach at this moment in time and let the tide take the uh, seaweed out because it's all, and it'll just do nothing but tangle up your line. But that's the outgoing tide. So the trick right now is the incoming tide because the incoming tide's coming in from the Gulf and it's pressing a lot of fresh water, especially the tail end of the incoming. When the incoming tide first starts coming okay. in it's pulling a lot of that seaweed back in that was pushed out with the outgoing but on the tail end of the incoming tide has been the hot bite lately along the beach and in the passes for snook redfish we've been seeing those black drum plenty of mangrove snapper there's a bunch of people fishing along the beach today catching a ton of mangrove snapper really? flipping shrimp under the dock I, yeah i was on the i i, I live on the beach and no I, on the beach and behind the marina casting shrimp oh underneath the dock. right there and yeah. Hubbard's, Hubbard's yeah. Okay. The mangrove snapper are thick around the structures. Oh, yes, um, and look at these things, man. I saw Beautiful them fishing snow. and they were reeling in nothing but seaweed in, in along like the Reddington. Beach. Yeah. 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 That and area. That's definitely. A stud. Look at that. That's a nice Wow. That's a nice snook. Yeah, the snook are definitely starting to load back up into the passes. Whoa. Uh, Go back to that one. one. Holy cow. Yeah. yeah, that was a stud. I think that one was 38 inches, the nice woman said, who submitted that one. And Noah here, that's yeah. Jim's uh, nephew, caught that one. Oh, he was talking to us yesterday. Yeah, that was a yeah, cool yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
John Sasser with another big one. The Flare Hawks are starting to come out. The Flare Hawk lures are a great way to kind of weed out the smaller fish uh, from the bigger ones. The, only the big, more aggressive fish are going to bite those big Flare Hawk bucktail jigs. Uh, they are a pain to cast, and uh, they get snagged up easy. But when you hook up, it's a big boy. And we're seeing a lot of the schoolie size snook on the oh, live he, shrimp. He, wait, good shot. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. You notice he's right there at the island. No, this one's uh, back in Tampa Bay at one of those mangrove shorelines. Uh, definitely a lot of them in the back bay around the islands of John's Pass, mm -hmm. for sure. And especially, like, on the, okay. the okay. north island. You can island. tell it's really shallow. Yeah, the north island of John's Pass on that east side And he's of it. using a what? Uh, that one was a live greenback. Oh, yeah. no shit. Yeah, he's on a charter, and uh, those live greenbacks are uh, my French. Uh, are a great option on that loop knot. Still seeing some steady trout action. Cool. Trout in the morning, in the morning time around John's Pass, just after sunrise to about 10 a.m., they've been seeing a lot of them trout. Oh, and nice. uh, mackerel are still around, too. Yes. The jetties, we're catching those mackerel. You guys are still seeing them on the We're getting offshore. Hub. We're getting max and kings. How, yeah. how deep we're are get, you seeing the mackerel right now? <laughs> we're getting them off the wrecks, and we're getting them off hard bottom between... <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I'm getting them. We're trolling out 20 feet all the way out to 30 and 40, 30 and 40 feet. And then uh, the we're kingfish, are you getting them on the flat lines, the trollers? We're getting them trolling on uh, sp on spoons, yeah. on the drones, and we're getting them on number two, on number two, um, what are they? Planers. The planers and number ones. Nice. Yes. So a variety then, of different styles of trolling yeah. is catching them. We're still seeing them on the flat lines, on the 10-hour trips. We're getting them on flat lines, too. And we're yeah. getting the big offshore. We're also getting the big bull reds offshore. We're yeah. seeing them. I know you're getting them inshore, mm -hmm. but we're getting nice big bull reds offshore as yeah. well. Those red so. fish are still spawning, and that's yes. why we're seeing a lot of them in the passes as they transition from the bay to those nearshore wrecks and reefs, we see those big bull redfish as far offshore as the 39-hour trips in that area. So those fish move out there in big schools to spawn up on the surface, and a lot of times they cruise along the bottom or near the bottom. And if they come past a boat that's bottom fishing, got a lot of smell going in the water, almost all the time you're going to end up hooking up with them as long as they're not actually in the process of spawning. They're very, very opportunistic feeders. And uh, when you're fishing, they're going to come up on your cut bait, live bait, and uh, they're going to hit it. This time of year is one of those times of the year you're very easily able to run across those fish. But they are spawning fish, so you want to make sure you get them back in the water as quickly as possible. With that, let's go near shore, Josh, and uh, show these guys what we're catching near shore. Uh, and then uh, we will get into your questions, folks. And we're still open uh, for the calls. Once we get into the questions, we'll uh, throw that extension out there if you guys want to go ahead and uh, call us for sure. Uh, so let's see what we're catching near shore and offshore. And uh, we will get right into oh, it. The, 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 sorry. We're going to show the photos. <laughs> get there, sorry. buddy. Man, I got excited. so excited. I love it. <laughs> the fish that we caught. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So. The near shore catches and offshore catches, we've definitely been seeing a lot of this red grouper action. It's been uh, pretty pretty good comparatively to the last five years or so. Uh, so we're definitely seeing an uptick in the red grouper, kind of slow, steady pick. Uh, the, the kind of red grouper grind right now is in full swing, but now it's finally starting to come to a close with the breakup of this red snapper season opener where we're going to be going out to deeper water, getting out there to that blue water. A lot of our trips this time of year are very focused anywhere from 70 foot of water upwards to about 140 foot of water for those red grouper on potholes, ledges, flat hard bottom, bait shows. And then as we move into the summertime going after those red snapper, now we're fishing uh, 160, 180, 200, 220 foot of water for those red snapper, gag grouper, scamp grouper, and really large red grouper out there in those bigger, deeper waters. But lately, it's been a lot of those nice red grouper. Definitely Some catching hub. them well. The flying hub two has been crushing them. The hub's been crushing We've them. We've been getting them. Yeah, the, yeah. The, there's the hub right there. That's the flying hub two, big dog. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very Jesus. worried about your eyesight. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, very, yes. very worried. I told you. He's not a captain. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> I'd be very concerned if hey, you were. Hey, it's Memorial Day weekend. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm a vet. <laughs> yes, thank you nice for your tiger. service. Yeah. Beautiful tiger, right? Wow. Yeah. Now, this is on yeah. the 10-hour trip, so this photo was taken from about probably 15 feet up. So that was yeah. a nice, big tiger Still shark. Still has his collars. As they get bigger, they lose their collars, too. Mm-hmm. They start to lose that, that beautiful pattern. The, a juvenile tiger shark from about maybe five five or so feet to about maybe Jeez. seven or so feet, I think, is one of the most beautiful animals to reel up. Yeah. Uh, except for maybe yeah. a big, big hogfish. It's pretty beautiful, too. But <laughs> uh, And a big scam. But uh, those tigers are just so unique looking with that coloration pattern that they get. And it's really, really cool to see them come up and then release them alive and healthy to fight another day. That's, that's yeah, the trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It always goes sustainability. Be- yeah, we can catch that. We can go out and catch them next week. Be- yeah, be- mm-hmm. No, no, you don't say next week. You just say tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, next week, that's it. Sustainability. Yeah. We get to put them back. That's great about and it. No, we're that's the benefit like of it. shark fishing in uh, the area that we fish. We're going to get into that a little bit, too. But okay. this is a nice big old mangrove snapper from today's. Jeez. Flying Hub 2 uh, How is he holding private it? fishing charter. Uh, then we've been seeing a lot of these hogfish still. He? What? He's holding it from the hook. He's holding the tail and then oh, holding the line. He? No, okay. yeah. My vision, sorry. I know, man. It's hey, bad. It's hang in there, bad. bud. Thank the U.S. Army. Hang in there, bud. Thank the U.S. Army. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's throwing out the vet card a lot. I mean, I guess I can't yeah. question it. It's, <laughs> it's Memorial, Memorial Day. Day weekend, man. <laughs> uh, thank you again to all the, the men and women of uh, service who have uh, yes. sacrificed so much. <laughs> so, uh, some nice hogfish, definitely, on the 10 hours of five hours we've been seeing them. Uh, yeah, been right. catching a lot of those red groupers on the five and 10 hours, too. We're getting them really good yeah, on our yeah. on our half day trips. We're on the hub, yes, trigger. we're getting keepers. Nice triggers. That's a nice yeah, trigger that's fish. That's a beautiful trigger. It's yeah, on the flying nice. hub two. Flying Very hub nice, two's been trigger. catching them. And that yeah, beautiful wahoo, wahoo oh, last wow. week. Oh yeah. my god, the color on that. They got a beautiful shot Woo. of that in the sun. He was still alive. He still has his beautiful color. Yeah, that's just such an amazing fish right there that, that was a once in a cool. lifetime that is, that is, fish right there look at that amazing. cigar that was a 73 pound wahoo caught on 90, a what'd you say? 73 73 and that was caught in a, a nomad dtx size 220 uh lure and that was a uh, dark purple bo- uh, backbone with a hot pink body on that nomad dtx uh 220 and it was such a large fish, it actually ripped this back hook, the trail hook, off the jig. And he landed it uh, with that front hook in the side of the fish's mouth. Wow. And that's a credit to having the drag set properly. If it was set much more, it would have definitely ended up shaking that second hook, too. Uh, so really, really good stuff that uh, Ed Hall from Birmingham, Alabama, was able to land that beautiful that's wahoo. A, do no, we that's have a killer a catch to talk about there, this? Dylan. Let's a talk about what? Catch. That, the drag. Because Pete talks to me about drag all the time it's very on the important. boat mm-hmm. at certain Depending points on what with what fish and what type important. of drag. Yeah. Captain Pete. Yeah. I, think I mean, when we're bottom fishing, we're hammered down a lot. But when you're pelagic and different things like that, yeah, it's it's important and it's different. When we're shark fishing also. Oh, well, yeah. well, explain it. Explain it. Yeah, because, like, for example, with bottom fishing, you want to have more drag. More drag. You're, it's a tug of war. Mm-hmm. You're just you're it's, you're it's just taking him away from his house and you want to get him away from that house. With the pelagics, it's a little give and take, right, mm-hmm. Dylan? It's a, it's a play. It's a it's a dance. <laughs> it's a so dance. You gotta go little, like, little, it's, you got to finesse Less. Yeah. Yeah. So a pelagic fish isn't going to break you off. So if you're flatlining for kingfish, he's just going to run. Yeah. And he's going to let run. it run. But you also don't want to let it run to the boat. So a lot of no. times, what Smokey will do, for example, if he's flatlining on a ten-hour trip, is he will set out a flatline and he will leave the drag much loop, much more loose. So that way, when the fish gets hooked, 
he doesn't. He, know. It's enough drag yeah. for the fish to know he's hooked, yeah. so he starts to run. And then once he runs really far away, that's when Smokey will tighten down that drag a little bit. So that oh, way, that fish, that fish is very far away from the boat, and he can tire that fish out away from the boat. And then once the fish is tired, he's able to retrieve that ah, fish. That's okay, great. Okay. The guests, well, so the guests get more of, of a. those watching, that's very that's good a news. very great tactic <laughs> with that larger boat that he works on. He's on the bigger boat. Mm -hmm. That larger fish will get under the boat and get in and get into that's good news. everything that's good news. and, and that, hook up yeah. underneath there and break off good information and you also get him and gaff him right and get him right into the boat yes. yeah and also yes. with a Great tactic with a kingfish a wahoo a cobia you don't want to bring that fish to the boat too green because yeah. if he's super green and he comes to the boat you try to gaff him he's going to thrash around and hurt something on your boat break or break material yeah break yeah. your gaff break, when you go to stuff, hook him. break rods and reels yeah with somebody yeah yeah and 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 hurt someone or something yeah yeah boat, yeah so. we 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 always me and captain pete here we always tell people to mm -hmm. get back yeah me and pete are going to take over from here and that's why it's so important to make sure that fish isn't too green coming on board the boat so it's it's uh, you, definitely okay here's a good question for those of the watching what do you mean by too green so if he if for example you catch a uh, fish like a, right a wahoo now. or a kingfish or a cobia next to the boat and you have your drag set very uh heavily and you're able to a lot of times Get like for example this wahoo for example is a great example that 73 pound wahoo that was hooked up great when, fish when ed hall hooked it on the troll uh he started fighting on it started pulling drag and then all of a sudden he thought it was it had come unhooked because what a big wahoo will do they're very smart fish and the same thing as a big mangrove snapper uh in and, and uh jig head ed summerall uh a lot of you guys know jig okay. head ed yeah. uh was talking to me about this one day and i found it very interesting that a big wahoo will actually swim at the boat because his goal is be being hook. so fast is he's able to swim at the boat and get the slack to shake the hook shake like, the he his head and flip that hook yes or make you think he come uh, he came off hooked and the, or uh, unhooked and as soon as you slow down he's able to get that slack to shake the hook as Pete alluded to and then what happens is that's the point of having a two speed reel is you're in low gear trolling but he starts running at the boat you can put it in high gear you can make sure you get the cranks on that fish but a lot of times once they see the boat. That's when they take yeah, the big yeah, run. Yeah, yeah, we, okay, and, and okay. luckily, Will and Jason had come downstairs, and they kind of saw a lot of this happening, and they were able to coach him about making sure the drag was a little looser, and that's sure enough exactly what Jighead Ed had talked about, how they run out the boat, they see the boat, and they make their big run, is exactly word for word what happened. The fish ran at the boat. He thought it had come unhooked. The crew's telling him to reel. He kept reeling, didn't give the fish slack, wasn't able to spit the hook. But then once he saw the boat, he hauled butt and did a big, big, massive run. And if that drag was too tight, he would have easily broken the line, broken the tackle, or spit the hook. So it's definitely a tricky thing when you're fishing for those different pelagic species. When you're bottom fishing, what I do at least is I make sure that drag is set more difficult or more uh, high to get that fish off the bottom to win the battle of making sure he doesn't get rock him in you the up. bottom column. And then once he you got ten cranks, fifteen cranks on that fish, that's when you ease off the drag oh. and you start finessing that fish up. And that's why that's okay. what you would do on a lever I can drag. Dig that. On a star drag, you don't necessarily want to stop reeling to adjust the drag on your star drag. On a lever drag reel, it's real easy to knock that lever back a couple clicks uh, to make sure you have uh, the drag set a little looser once you win the battle on the bottom. Huh, yeah. okay. A little oh, different. Well, I learned something there. Josh, we got a few more photos to get through here, and then we are going to get... Let's get back to these photos. and uh, I like that Wahoo. He's yeah, he's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's yeah, huge. And then uh, what do we red, got? Big old ARS. There it is. So that's Ed Hall in the middle. We got Denoris on the left. And uh, the... Uh, man, it's escaping my, name, my, uh, my memory here. Uh, that's Darn amazing. it! He's gonna make fun of me next time I see him. But uh, Uncle on the on the right there, definitely a beautiful fish. All three gentlemen from I Birmingham. Right. Are you answering the phone right now? It's my girlfriend's mom. <laughs> Just take it outside, bud. <laughs> this is why you don't have amateurs on the show. All right, so, dude, seriously, Scraps, hang up the phone. Okay, I gotta go find. 
<laughs> uh, beautiful, beautiful fish for sure. Sorry. And now we're getting into the red snapper. Uh, as I was talking about, June 1st is red snapper season opener. So we got some big old red snapper and gags to get you guys excited. Just a little preview of what's to come. <sighs> and there's Jig Head Ed. If you, oh, don't, yeah. if you don't know Jig nice. Head Ed. Holy cow. If you don't know him, you'll know him by his catches. Yeah. Definitely a lot Jesus. of big fish that he hauls in. So let's go ahead and give away our first free trip of the night. We've got Ooh. that uh, five-hour half day for two guests. That's a $130 value. Uh, we're going to give away absolutely free. Uh, remember, guys, if you're picked as that lucky winner, you do have to comment you, or uh, text us, excuse me, text us your full home address to that phone number over there in the corner. So let's see who won our first free trip Josh, of the night. am I doing it right? Not You're not pointing to the, phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to the phone number, man. It's different. It won't be... <laughs> okay. Pat McGrath from Canada. Congratulations, bud. So, congratulations, Pat. Make sure you go ahead and text that phone number, your full home address, in order to claim that free trip. All right. So, with that, let's get into these questions. And uh, we're going to pull up our handy-dandy uh, comments and Wait. see what questions we have. Would you say that gags and red snapper bite better during the day? Uh, mangrove snapper typically bite better at night. night. Red yeah. snapper will bite through the nighttime period, but we really tend to target the red snapper more during the day. Uh, at night, for example, on our 39-hour trips, we're pretty highly focused on the mangrove snapper, the vermilions, the porgies. Uh, and then during the day, sunrise, that's when we start transitioning more to that deeper water where we're going to target those gags and American red snapper during the day. And uh, I would say overall, the gag grouper and red snapper bite is primarily targeted and a little bit better during the day. But you catch both gags and red snapper at night. So that would be my guess. I don't know. Pete, do you have a, any opposition to that opinion all i have to add to that is um th during the full moon cycle at night you get a really good mango bite yeah just that's all i have to add to what you said that's about it you know i like that full moon mango bite at night yeah you know, they really get crunchy and they're partying and they're chilling down there at night you mm -hmm. know under that moon that moon really drives those fish yes you know, those <laughs> you snapper, talking about they you like or what you're talking to <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's all i got to add to what you said there so, so the flare hawk jigs someone asked can you use the flare hawk jigs at night the flare hawk jigs are primarily used at night in the passes for those snook fishing around the bridge lights dock lights throwing that flare hawk jig there's a lot of different uh ways or options to retrieve it the the steady crank method the occasional uh uh, kind of popping it along the bottom method, uh, the steady crank pause, pop. There's a bunch of different ways that people work those flare Dylan, hawks. What the hell is a flare hawk jig? It's a uh, bucktail. It's a big bucktail. bucktail. So yeah. basic, What's a bucktail? So Some, a lot of us don't know. So the best way to explain a bucktail jig would be for Josh to Google it and show us a photo. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, because That's great. That a little is a good hard question. question yeah, you know? right, yeah. right? Like for the Some of us really don't know. Yeah. yeah, so uh, prof professional jigs, there's uh, uh, there's first lights, there's um, the real popular one around John's Pass, I'm blanking on the name, uh, but there's a bunch of different local jig companies that make those flare hawk jigs, and it's essentially just a lead, it's a really oversized jig head with like a, a six to seven knot J hook on it, and then uh, oh, feathers. Really? And then they wow. tie them together. So it's a definitely a bigger, bigger uh, jig. It's typically oh, about it's one to two oh, yeah, ounces. Okay. And, and that's for... That. Specifically, they use it inshore for snook species. You can tip it with squid, and you can use them offshore for red grouper. A lot of people kind of... Uh, a more old style approach to uh, drift fishing for red grouper was the white bucktail uh, tipped with a long strip of squid or an octopus yep. tentacle or a bonita strip. Uh, they do work huh. for drifting yeah. for red grouper too, but yep. primarily nowadays it's kind of considered more of an inshore snook or grouper fishing jig, uh, and it's primarily utilized at night. Uh, that's the bucktail jig. Now repeat what you said, how to use it. 
uh, there's a bunch of different ways to use it. That everybody has their own approach to using it. I think the kind of slow, steady uh, retrieve is most popular around John's Pass because we have the rockier bottom that you might get hung up on. Um, but definitely uh, a little bit of a use it and figure out your favorite method. And it depends on where you're fishing. Like, for example, in Blinds Pass, which is a popular snook fishing destination, okay. Pass a Grill Pass, uh, more sandy bottom, you're not going to get hung up in the bottom. So some people will kind of pop it along the bottom. So it all mm. depends on your approach and the area we're fishing and if you're going to have snags in the bottom or not and what those fish are looking for. Sometimes they want a slow, steady retrieve. Sometimes they want it popped along the bottom. You just Duly never know. noted. Yeah, you gotta keep you gotta keep <laughs> changing it up, finding out what works, and then also keep in mind the next question is an interesting one is about reserving live bait. You want to make sure if you want to order pinfish for your five hour half day, ten hour all day, thirty nine hour, uh, whatever it might be, your pinfish must be ordered. 48 hours in advance at least 48 hours in advance or more you don't have to pre-order live shrimp we have those for you at the dock when you show up uh but uh you definitely want to make sure that you order your pinfish uh in advance to make sure that we have them for you um and then also, let's see what other questions. Oh, guys, with also with your pinfish, we got a guy that actually goes out there and does that for you. So he will make sure it's safe and sound on the big boats. When you go on the Florida or the Friendly, he will make sure it's on there. If you pay for it and you show it on your receipt, it'll be there for you, okay? Most of the time. <laughs> it is time. it is fishing, <laughs> not catching. You do have to end up catching them. And uh, it is tricky to uh, make sure that you get them uh, in the traps, especially during summertime when we have the weather coming in, when we have a lot of orders to do. It gets a little bit tricky. So uh, keep that in mind. Bear with us when you order them 48 hours in advance, 99% of the time we make sure we have them for you. Josh, what's the next question, bud? Uh, will you need 10-ounce sinkers on the 39-hour trip? You don't need 10-ounce sinkers. Uh, the 6-ounce yeah, sinkers... The six ounce sinkers is primarily what we utilize on our 39 hour trips. Man, keep it in the tracks. What did I tell you before the show? You got to go next door or something? Oh, yeah. It's the last warning. You're on your, your third strike. So uh, keep in mind on our 39 hour trips, uh, the six ounce jig or the six ounce lead is primary. We do use eight ounce leads as well. Uh, 10 ounces, you want to bring a couple of them, but you don't need a ton of those larger weights. Really, six ounces is what you want to focus on, a couple eights, maybe one or two tens. And then I always like to make sure you have a 16 ounce in the tackle box just in case you get out there and you run into some of that heavier current, you have a bigger lead to use. You can double up eights if you need to, That's but right. yep. one, one lead is always better than two because those leads tend to separate as they drop. They can twist up, and it really yeah. causes a lot of problems when you have more than one egg sinker. You double so. them up? I didn't know that. Oh, cool. If you need more weight, you can, yeah, you double, can double them up. up, but then what? You can tape them if you have doubled them up so they stay together. That's a good. Um, that's a good approach. Some them so some they duct don't tape. separate, like you're saying. Yeah. yeah, some duct tape will fix yeah, anything. Yeah, because yeah. as those Old leads drop to bottom, <laughs> they uh, separate, and that that's going to cause uh, definitely a good opportunity for tangles. Yeah. All right, so we are going to move in here to uh, some of the uh, other questions. What other questions do we have here, Josh? How much leader do we need and what pound uh, for the amberjacks and larger fish? So amberjacks, we always recommend a little longer leader when you're live bait fishing for those big amberjacks. Uh, typically around six-foot leaders is a good option uh, for amberjack fishing. And... Uh, you want to try to keep within about that when you're fishing, especially on a party boat with a lot of people around. Uh, the smaller trips where you have less people around, I would even go as long as 10 to 12 feet uh, when you're fishing for those amber jacks with a big live bait. That gives that live bait plenty of travel away from that bigger lead, and it won't spook the fish as well. Plus, it gives that big live bait a more natural presentation. Uh, when you're fishing dead bait on the bottom, you don't need as long of a leader uh, because you're keeping that lead still on the bottom. Where you're fishing amberjack, a lot of times you're fishing up in the water column, and that's when you want that bigger leader to give that uh, live bait more travel around the area. Um, 
So should we use lighter tackle on the 39-hour trips at night for mangrove snapper and not worry so much about the gags? No. We talked a lot about this on our last show. Basically, once gag grouper season opens up June 1st, you really don't want to go less than 60-pound test primarily because 60-pound uh, test will catch you mangrove snapper. As long as the bite's pretty steady and everybody's using similar tackle, the 60-pound works great for mangrove snapper. Uh, but if you lighten up, you'll get more bites. But if you do happen to hook that gag grouper, He's you're going to have... Free. Yeah, you're gonna have no shot of landing them That's with uh, sixty pound or with question. less than sixty pound test. I got a question. Yeah, uh, I normally don't work the sixty or the, the long trips. Hour. Yeah. yeah, and I, I don't, you know. So, what is a normal rig? What is a normal rig? Can you explain that? We. It's the same as what you would use inshore or or near shore. It's the fish finder rig with the slip lead, the swivel, about a four to six foot leader, and your single hook rig if you're using live bait, and your double snail rig if you're using okay. uh, dead bait for the mangrove snapper. Snapper at night. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, thought it was exciting. Never nope, mind. Nope. That's <laughs> it. Same approach. Just deeper water. That's <laughs> it. More challenges. That's all it. right. Sorry, guys. Didn't Moving mean to bore on. you. So next we, question. Yeah. What is the next question? Next question. <laughs> yes, we see Ariel. <sighs> so let's see I here. See, I can't Josh see is going to pull it up. Uh, so would you say, oh, we've already answered that one. So trolling, trolling is a good option uh, on a 39-hour trip. You can troll on any five-hour half day, 39-hour, or 44-hour trip, but uh, trolling is an extra option. You guys are going bottom fishing on a bottom fishing trip, uh, so you really want to focus on bottom fishing on that bottom fishing trip. Uh, you want to make sure that, especially on your first trip, there's definitely a very high learning curve. Uh, so whatever I tell newer people who are coming out with us for the first time, focus on bottom fishing. Uh, if you rented a rod and reel, that rod and reel is not going to work for trolling. You want to just focus on the bottom fishing part of the trip. That's what we're out there to do. Trolling is an extra option. If you're an advanced angler, you've been out there before, you know what you're doing, you have the specialty tackle that's going to work for trolling, you can use that to troll on a five-hour, half-day, 39-hour, 44-hour trip. But you need to know what you're doing. You need to have the right reel for the job, at least a 50-wide, two-speed, 80-wide, two-speeds, even better. You need to have the big trollers like the skirted plugs, the Nomad DTX minnows, the Rapala X-Raps, all those lures we have in the shop, we can show you prior to the trip. Uh, and we do have the trolling reels too. So some people will come out and buy the trolling reel, buy the trolling rod, and buy the tackle prior to the trip, which is an option for you. But again, if it's your first time out, second time out, focus on the bottom fishing. Kind of once you get in the grasp of that, that's maybe when you want to branch out into trolling. But on a 39-hour trip, we have 20 hours of bottom fishing time, and it's a 7- to 9-hour ride out, 7- to 9-hour ride back. So a lot of people will get too wrapped up into trying to troll on the way out. And on the trolling on the way out, we're catching maybe some mackerel, some bonita, maybe a big kingfish. But it's nothing really to write home about. Most of the time, the trolling uh, where we catch those big, big uh, fish like that wahoo, for example, is the second day while we're transitioning between spots offshore and blue water. That's when we hook those kind of more notable species. Species, and that's only if we have long runs when we're transitioning from one area to the next. And it's not always guaranteed that we're going to have that long run in order to be trolling. So really want to focus on bottom fishing and make sure that you're getting your rest on the way out. Make sure you're preparing for that bottom fishing time. And drink water. Yeah, instead of sure. lots of water. Drink water. And I, today, for example, we had a guy <laughs> fall out on the dolphin boat. He, Did you really? Uh, yeah, he hadn't. He hadn't eaten anything. He wasn't drinking any water. That's just, what, an hour trip, too? Yeah, an we're hour not, and a half trip. We're not talking about a 39 or a five-hour half day here. Yeah. Like the, just guys, an hour booze cruise. I, I'm a U.S. Army veteran, <laughs> and said. I've been to Iraq. This sun beats on you. It really does beat you up. 
and you, you need, need to be to prepared. Drink water. And you need water. to be prepared with the right food. You need yep. to make sure you have Gatorade. Uh, in the summertime, especially June and July, it gets really nice out there, uh, and it gets very hot, and the fishing could be good. And uh, all of a sudden, you focus on that. You forget to take your medication. If, if, you're, if you've got some type of heart condition or if you're diabetic or even if you're a very healthy young adult, if you don't drink water, you don't eat properly, you're going to end up cramping. You're going to end up getting heat exhaustion or worse. And it ruins a trip for everybody else. Someone passes out, hits their head. We got to turn around and come back in with an injured passenger. And uh, the trip's cut short for everybody else. So you want to make sure that you are prepared ment yes. mentally, physically, and then make sure you are uh, if, taking care of yourself. If you have medications, please bring me your medications. I don't oh, mean to yeah, chime in and point. cut you off. But we get people offshore, and I get them offshore 16 miles or whatever the case may be, and then they tell me that they have heart condition problems or whatever, and they don't have any of their medications. And I'm like, that's great. <laughs> and that's, I was just throwing that funny. out there. These are things that we need, you know, yeah. you guys need, you know, and when we get offshore, we And this, that's, so. that's on a half day trip. We've to been out there out. on a 63 yeah. hour trip and a guy comes up and says, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm diabetic and I don't have my insulin. It's like, like whoa, what whoa, are you whoa, thinking, whoa, man? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So yeah. it's just very, very common that this happens. So really when you're going offshore fishing, your medication should be at the top of your packing list. Don't forget then, that stuff. Guys, you yes. gotta. I'm actually you gotta let really the glad we're and, talking about this. You gotta let, let the, the captain, captain know if you have. If, yeah. yeah, if you do have uh, some kind of heart issues or serious things, it's good to let the captain know so he does know about those issues. Those and are on good. the 39 yeah, hour trips, on the longer trips, on the 39 Sorry. hour trips. But also, boats. don't be afraid. Just let them know. Yeah, yeah. And we gotta know where it's located and how to administrate mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yep. So yep. if it's something unique, like hey, I might have. Uh, this instance happened, I need a shot here kind of thing. And you'd be surprised what we've run across over the years. <laughs> but it's very, very helpful. Some of the most... Scraps ran across an IED in June 13, 2009. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. Memorial oh. Day weekend. I had to run that across. Sorry. So <laughs> keep in mind, some of the worst incidents that we've had offshore, some of the most notable occurrences in the past 15 years at our company have always been nine out of 10 times related to people who needed certain medications that didn't bring them with them on some of those longer range trips. So make mm -hmm. sure you come prepared and uh, closed toed shoes. Someone said, I wear flip flops. Don't do that. Uh, it's not a good idea. One of the worst incidences I had personally was uh, I was working the deck when I was real young. I was probably maybe 10, 11, 12 years old. And I always loved being barefoot. Barefoot yeah. was, oh, I got on the book. Yeah. I cut, I kicked my shoes or my flip flops off, and I was barefoot all the time. Oh. And it was rough weather, and uh, about a twenty pound red grouper hit the deck next to me and flopped right, and the side of the fish went into the side of my foot, and I had about twelve spines in the side Ooh. of my foot. It was extremely painful you and wear. very bloody. And to this day, I will not go fishing unless I'm wearing proper footwear <laughs> uh, for bigger fish, at least. I mean, you'll catch me out there sometimes and flip-flops, but it's very, very rare. You want to wear closed-toed yeah, shoes. Yeah, guys, please, please wear closed shoes. Closed-toed shoes with non-slip grip yeah, soles. That's the big just, thing. Yeah, so it, fishing boots a is thing. a great preparation tool. The extra tough boots, the Grundins, whatever it might be, hook. Uh, they, there's a ton of different boots out there, and they even make fishing shoes now. Some of my favorite shoes are those uh, slip on extra tough, uh, kind of water shoes. Uh, and they have the same sole as the boots. So make sure you don't slip around and it protects your feet. So real, real good idea to make sure you come prepared with not only your medication, but proper attire and then wear layers. One of the biggest things that I see on those 39 hour trips is people will come with one, two changes of clothes, no rain gear. They don't have the proper bedding. You want to make sure you have a sleeping bag, uh, a pillow. Yep. You want to make sure you have a sheet. I like bringing a, a, 
a sleeping bag, a sheet, and a pillow. And then one of the big things people forget, I forget occasionally, is something to cover up your eyes because there has to be lights on the boat. There has to be navigational lights. There has to be deck lights in the back. There's going to be lights going on and then people moving around with flashlights occasionally in the galley looking for something. So I always like to bring something to cover my eyes with. And then even earplugs. You can bring earplugs to keep the area quiet uh, because you want to be able to sleep and you want to make sure that you're prepared and rested for that 20 hour fishing grind. So something to cover your eyes, something to cover your ears, and then something to stay comfortable while you're sleeping and Always bring your rain gear. My rule of thumb is you bring your rain gear, it's in your bag, you don't need it. Better to have than to want. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then the one trip you don't have your rain gear is it's when it rains the whole time. Pours trip. the whole time. Our yeah. point yep. is correct. to have you guys fishing for fun, and that's really our goal. Yeah, you want to have you guys fishing for fun. And you want to fish for fun sick, and have a good trip. It's a good a experience. Good <laughs> Josh, do we have another question? Oh, I guess uh, let's go ahead and give away our 10-hour all-day for oh, two guests. Oh, here we go. Nice. This Who's is our next go. winner. Who's going? It's a two, $218 value. Let's see who... Uh, <laughs> someone said, I know you fish in your dad's shoes with them Nike Monarchs. <laughs> that <laughs> brings back good memories. A, nice. Let's see who... Nice. And a, a, what are you talking about? Our waffle. Uh, it says pick a random winner. Ro- Waffle. Danny Nung. <laughs> Congratulations. Danny Nung. Nice. Congrats. Congratulations. There you go. Ten hour all day for two guests. Ooh. Where's he at? Uh, Where are we at, Danny? Yeah, so where's Danny Nung from? He uh, he will let us know. Make sure you com- <laughs> make sure Congrats, you text- Danny. Make sure you text us your full home address to that phone number right below Scraps there to claim that free trip. Scraps is going to be there to give you a hand. You got to do that within <laughs> yeah, about yeah. five minutes to claim your free trip. <laughs> To prove that you were watching live. Uh, I'm going to take a random guess and say <laughs> Indianapolis. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Who we'll knows? find out shortly. I could be wrong. Yeah. Let's get into <laughs> our last no question before we wrap this show up. Let's see here. We got a few more minutes before we wrap up. Uh, keep going, Josh. What do we got here? Jeez, Are we out of questions? That? You can yeah. see that? You went through the first uh, 20 questions already? Man. That's That's crazy. Uh, Even though I've been on the boats in the 39-hour trip many times, I got seasick once. I started on the Dramamine the day before. Yeah, I mean, you always want to start preparing for the trip the day before, drinking plenty of water, eating right, getting plenty of sleep. I always like to, as well, make sure that you start the Dramamine. You're paying on a 39-hour trip, it's $3.99 per adult, and you don't want to get out there... Oh, we have a call. Oh, awesome. Oh, nice. Let's see All who's right. calling us yeah, today. All righty. Well, hello there. You are live on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook live show. Hopefully you intended to call in live to the show. All righty. Call well, in. Well, hello there. You are live We're hearing on our, our, uh, our uh, feedback, Josh, an echo. Yeah, Hey, how you doing? Oh, oh, there caller, is. if you're watching the show, make sure you mute the show in the background. They are watching the show at their house, and you got to mute it so we can't hear it. If you're watching the show, make sure you mute the show. Yeah. <laughs> you got it? There he is. What's Perfect. So what's up, man? How can we help you? Uh, still got to mute the show, bud. If you're watching on your end, you got to turn off your computer or walk into a different room. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, we got you. Yeah. yeah. So, who do we have the hey, pleasure of speaking with? Norris, how you doing? It's who? Just Norris, how you doing? Hey, Norris, what's up, buddy? So, uh, you and Ed, you guys really eating that fresh Wahoo tonight or what? Oh, man, so we clean it. We're eating it off the ball. Yes, nice. sir. Very that, nice. And you wanted to try to bring that Wahoo home whole to show uh, Ed's kids, and uh, they didn't have a cooler big enough. We tried to take the 130-quart uh, angle cooler out of the back of my truck. Still wasn't long enough to fit. It was, uh, what, 87 inches, I think, we uh, measured at, right, Norris? Yeah, it was 87 inches. And, uh, it was actually my kids that he wanted to show it to the gene kids are grown. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a monster fish, man. Uh, hopefully, you guys have been eating good. 
<laughs> oh, we've been eating great, man. Been great. I just had one thing to add when you said about the rain gear. Yeah. Last year in um, July, June, I'm sorry, when Red Snap and Gas came open, we went through a major storm while we was out there. Yeah. And whoever had rain gear was actually out there fishing through the rain gear. And I landed two 16 to 20 pound gags doing the rain because I had my rain gear. So please, everybody, take That's the it. rain gear yeah. if you're going to go during those times of the year. And you never know in the summertime. We run out there, and you can come across some of those storms unexpectedly. You're re- you're specifically referring to a very notable uh, storm that was, I believe, around June seventh last year, uh, and that was actually a big piece of a low pressure that kind of broke off, and it actually kind of developed some tropical formations. Fourteen boats sunk within twenty four hours. During that really? storm you're referring to, Norris, and one of my good buddies, uh, who actually was a captain for us a while back, uh, ended up sinking a boat out there unexpectedly. They were going home very safely, and they just had a rogue ri- wave kind of hit them on the back corner, overtook the boats. The pumps couldn't keep up, and the boat ended up just overturning. And they got pulled out of the water by the Coast Guard and sat on a Coast Guard cutter for four days. Uh, because the Coast Guard cutter couldn't come in because they were still doing search and rescue operations, trying to find other boaters that were on uh, that were stranded out there from that big storm. So that was uh, one of those times where it's very good to be on the Florida Fisherman too. That nice big old stable <laughs> cat, right? Yeah, it was very safe, and uh, like I said, the weather conditions they got a little rough, and uh, but the boat is a very good and a big sturdy boat. So mm-hmm. we was actually able to get put rain gear on if you had rain gear. If you didn't have rain gear, you was inside waiting on the rain to pass. But while you're inside waiting on the rain to pass, we was outside catching group with our rain gear in the rain. And some of the times that rougher weather gets they, the fish excited. They chew. They yeah. love it. They don't want that calm. They want water moving. They want fluctuation. And that that's little bit of disturbance. Eat. Yeah, that is when they're going to eat and everything. And yeah. A lot of times it's yes. just a little bit of a pressure change. Like in that case, a little bit of a low pressure. That barometer oh, dropped. Yeah, Those grouper point. turned on. And uh, you guys were able Forces to capitalize on that good bite. That's yeah. a very good point, yeah. Good suggestion, man. Yeah, good Any year, other good. insider tips? I mean, you've gone on probably uh, close to two dozen trips recently in the last two years or so. You you definitely have some insight. What would you say is some of the things that you might have uh, forgotten about or not known about your first couple of experiences that you wouldn't leave home without going on a 39-hour trip, bud? I would just say rest. Just get yes. some rest because – Fishing 20 straight hours, you know, sometimes 22 straight hours. Just some rest. So you don't want to be that one that's leaning up against something, holding your pole while you're sleeping, missing a bite. It's yeah. all about getting some rest. And if then that starts rest, the day before. That starts the day before, right? Yeah, you just started. Oh, right? yeah, of course it starts the day before. Yeah. I mean, I know when I'm going on one of those 39 hours, I like to try to stay up real late the night before and uh, prepare the rods, get everything ready, and then go to sleep and sleep in the next day. That way I wake up around maybe 9, 10, 11 a.m., and uh, then you get on the boat, you get all settled in, and uh, might even cheat and use a little Advil PM to go to bed at like 6, 7 o'clock at night and get a solid four or five hours of sleep on the way out. And a lot of times people are just so excited, it's hard to sleep. On the most recent trip, Norris, we had a gentleman going out, been watching the videos for three, four years. He was so pumped. He was prepping all his rigs the night before uh, and just was overexcited and couldn't sleep. And then uh, got his car loaded with all his gear. It was super hot. He's not used to the hotter weather. Drove down, loaded the boat with all his heavy gear and got overheated and almost had heat exhaustion before the boat even pulled out. And uh, we were close to pulling him off the boat and saying, hey, man, it's not smart. You go out there. He ended up pulling it together, cooling off, and drank some Gatorade, ate some uh, food, and and kind of pulled it together and ended up having a good experience. But you make a great point, making sure you're rested, ready to fish. Uh, I think John Martin says it best when he says, uh, I catch the the fish of your dreams uh, while you're sleeping. And uh, that's that's a good point. That's nice. That's exactly right, because – a lot of times in the night, if people don't sleep doing the ride out and they want to try to troll and catch macro, bonita, whatever, but if you don't sleep, when the bite is hot in the middle of the night, uh, first thing in the morning, 
you're in your bunk and everybody else is out there kidding. And you wake up and be like, oh, man, I missed the hot spot. Like, you don't know which spot is going to be the hot spot. Yep. You yep. just don't know. That's why you got to be available to fish every single spot. And I'm guilty of that a lot of times during the day, like around midday. I like to try to take a little break because uh, a lot of times I'm out there just to relax. So <laughs> around midday, when the bite slows down a little bit, I'll hop in my bunk. And then I always, every time I pop out of my bunk and walk downstairs and look in the fish box, there's always a new scamp or red grouper or a big mangrove in the box. And you miss one spot. But that was your opportunity to catch that nice big trophy fish that could have, for example, won you a jackpot. The people who catch the most fish have their bait in the water on the bottom the longest. And the only way to do that is making sure you're properly rested, you're prepared with those rigs tied up, you've got the right tackle, and uh, you you have a little bit of luck and a lot of ex, uh, a preparation to set you up for success, right? This is exactly right. And then a lot of people look at me crazy because about an hour and a half after I'm on the boat, I'm in my bunk. And reason being, <laughs> we drive from Birmingham. So I don't. I work that morning. We drive that night on purpose just so I can be tired enough to get some sleep so I can actually be on the rail the whole time. Well prepared, thought out in advance. Comes all the way from Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, you guys do well out there, man. You proved it with that 73-pound Wahoo, bud. That was an awesome fish for sure. That was amazing. I'll tell you. It, it really was. Are, I'm uh, super proud of my brother for our land in that fish. I'm, I'm super proud of him because he spent so much time and so much focus and energy on getting the right tackle, getting the drag set right. And he had, I mean, he lost a ton of stuff just trying to learn what to do. And now he's got it dialed in, so I expect more of those to come. Yeah, well, yeah. Sure. Amen to that. Well, I appreciate you calling in, man. Thank you so much. Thank gotta, you, Daniel. Have a good night. All right. See you, Norris. We'll see you soon, bud. I gotta chime in, Dylan. Yeah. I love those uh, them overnight trips. I uh, I'll dry. I'll run second captain on them sometimes, and I run out eight, nine, ten hours, and I'm like just the anticipation. Mm. Everybody, not everybody, but you know, most people are sleeping. And I'm just like, I can't wait to get out there and fish, mm-hmm. man. And then I fish, and I'll tell, I'll tell you. And then like four, five in the morning comes along, and now I've been up, I've been up for you know fourteen hours, fifteen hours, a little while, and uh, I finally lay down, and then I wake up, and I look in the box, and then uh, Wilbur, Jason's like, yeah, man, right when you went to sleep, we moved the boat, and, and we uh, they fired we right, we got, yeah, we crushed them right when you went to bed, and. Ah, that morning bite. I'll tell yeah. you, that morning bite or that pre-morning dawn bite is uh, and phenomenal, you never know. too. You it's never know. Bite. You never know, man. You got to be out there and have, you got to have that bait wet. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the key. So, I can't wait to work, work one of those with you guys. It's a fun trade. They're, they're really good, man. Yeah. You never know. They're all different. You never know what you're going to get out there. I love that that deep water, that deeper water fix, man. Yeah. It's purple purple deep blue is uh yeah. definitely a a, <laughs> so. a a life-changing experience. It is still. Yeah. So yeah. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get into our last giveaway of the night. We are going to give away our free 39-hour fishing trip for one guest. We're going to wrap this show up. Hopefully, we'll see you guys all next week for another episode of the live stream show. Our first one of American Red Snapper season is next week. We're working on getting the brothers Salt Strong as our next live show guest. And next week, we've got Captain Mike Anderson from The Real Animals calling in, talking a little about, about tarpon fishing and uh, we'll have some of the crew calling in uh, through June and July most of the time it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to get guests in the studio so we're going to do some more of our calling guests some more of our virtual guests and uh, we'll work our way through the busier time of year like that so hopefully we'll see you next week also don't forget if you're one of our Hubbard's Marina supporters and you've got access to that private supporters page you want to make sure you hop over there after the show about five minutes or so after after the show, we'll get into that after show. So don't forget the private supporters after show. You can become a supporter today by clicking that become a supporter button at the top of our Facebook timeline. Uh, if you haven't become a supporter already, it's a great way to get after show access and you get a little bit more kind of communication through the week and some advanced information that we often put through the supporters page as well. So Definitely join us for the supporters after show and uh, become a supporter today right at the top of our Facebook timeline. And uh, with that, 
We'll see you next week for another episode, but let's see who won our 39-hour fishing trip. Take it away, Josh. Also, I, I do want to say uh, Specialist Starnes. Yeah. Specialist Starnes, Specialist Cook, uh, uh, Sergeant Starnes, Specialist Cook, uh, Sergeant Marias, and uh, Sergeant freaking... Are you shouting out your whole crew here? Yeah, the yeah. ones I lost in Iraq. I gotcha. Steven DeRipo with the 39-hour free trip giveaway. Congratulations, Steven. Make sure, again, you claim that by texting that uh, phone number, your full home address. We'll see the rest of you guys next week for another episode of our live stream show. And don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're you're just just too busy. busy. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Specialist comment.